Why does a million dollar missile lose to 15 kilograms of powder? Why can't a superpower avoid being choked by materials? Can a million dollar Tomahawk cruise missile really have its fate sealed by 15 kilograms of unassuming powder? Without this pile of rare earth materials, does an expensive missile become a headless fly, unable to find its target? It sounds like a tall tale, but this is the bizarre reality. These rare earth elements are no ordinary powder. They are strategic materials that determine the outcome of modern warfare, acting as the navigational brain of a missile. Take dysprosium and terbium, two heavy rare earth elements. After precise processing, they are made into special alloys with superparamagnetic properties, which are used in the core structure of a missile's fiber optic gyroscope. This gyroscope, in the midst of vibrations of thousands of rotations per second, can capture magnetic signals at the quantum level to control the missile's flight attitude error to within 0.01 degrees, ensuring it can accurately hit its target during intercontinental flights. During the Gulf War, U.S. Tomahawk cruise missiles, thanks to their rare earth-containing inertial navigation systems, broke through defenses in Operation Desert Storm and destroyed Iraqi strategic targets with an error of less than 10 meters. In the field of modern hypersonic weapons, rare earth materials are even more indispensable. The properties they provide, such as high temperature resistance and strong magnetic stability, allow missiles to maneuver and change trajectory at speeds of more than Mach 5 at the edge of the atmosphere, completely breaking through the interception limits of existing anti-missile systems. Without these rare earth elements forming a digital nervous system, even the most advanced guidance systems would become useless mechanical shells instantly turning costly missiles into harmless, blind, devices. What's even more mind-bending is that the United States, a military superpower, has stumbled on this small amount of rare earth. A look at confidential Pentagon reports reveals a shocking set of data. China controls 90% of the world's rare earth processing capacity, with separation technologies for elements from dysprosium oxide to terbium forming an almost impenetrable technical barrier. In contrast, the United States cannot even independently refine seven key mid-to-heavy rare earth elements. These elements are the core for manufacturing high-temperature resistant alloys and high magnetic materials, directly affecting missile guidance accuracy and the performance of stealth coatings for fighter jets. At rare earth mines in Arizona, stockpiles of raw or sit idle for long periods due to a lack of refining technology. They have to be shipped across the Pacific to China for deep processing. Even more astonishing, 87% of the supply chains for more than 1,000 U.S. military weapons systems have a direct or indirect connection to Chinese suppliers. From the guidance chips of Patriot air defense missiles and the vector engines of F-35 fighter jets to the electromagnetic catapult systems on nuclear-powered aircraft carriers, the core components of every piece of advanced weaponry bear the mark of Chinese rare earth. This seemingly asymmetric dependence is like a sword of Damocles hanging over the heads of the U.S. military, ready to shake the foundation of its military hegemony at any time due to supply chain fluctuations. Next, we'll expose the material Achilles heel of the superpowers, see what a mess Europe and the U.S. have gotten into trying to break free from their rare earth dependence and discuss the true global technological and peace-related competition behind it all. The Mountain Pass Rare Earth Mine in California was once a source of American pride, but today, it has become a symbol of embarrassment. Two-thirds of the rare earth produced here must be shipped to China for processing before being shipped back to the U.S. to build missiles and ships. The U.S. government has poured hundreds of millions of dollars into MP materials, hoping it can achieve domestic rare earth magnet production. However, it can currently produce at most 1,300 tons of neodymium oxide per year, while China can easily produce 300,000 tons of neodymium iron boron magnets a year. What's even more ironic is that the U.S. Department of Defense invested $258 million in an Australian company in 2023 to build a rare earth processing plant in Texas. But nearly two years later, it hasn't even secured a wastewater treatment permit and there's no sign of the factory. This story hides the fatal flaw of the American military-industrial complex. According to the U.S. Government Accountability Office's 2023 report, Defense Critical Mineral Supply Chain Assessment, 
It is explicitly stated that it would take at least 15 years to rebuild the rare earth supply chain from scratch. During this period, not only would the U.S. have to overcome core technology patent barriers, such as ion adsorption rare earth extraction, but it would also have to face strict scrutiny under the National Environmental Policy Act. A rare earth project in Montana was stuck in the approval process for seven years because it failed to meet environmental standards. More fatally, the capital market has already voted with its feet. Over the past decade, venture capital in rare earth-related companies in the U.S. was less than one-twentieth of China's. Even the former giant MP Materials saw its stock price plummet by 67% in 2022 due to high production costs. A confidential 2024 report from the RAND Corporation is a harsher blow. In the field of precision-guided weapons, the U.S. missile production line's monthly capacity is only one-fifth of China's. For example, for Tomahawk cruise missiles, the annual shortage of their core component, samarium cobalt magnets, is 32 tons. The U.S. Strategic Rare Earth Reserve, if consumed at the rate of the Russia-Ukraine conflict, could only support high-intensity combat for six weeks. This dangerous situation of dancing on the edge of a knife stands in stark contrast to the Pentagon's annual military spending of $770 billion. While the U.S. military is showing off its strength in the Middle East and Asia-Pacific, the foundation of its strategic deterrent system is firmly in the hands of factories across the Pacific. Europe is not doing any better. The Silmet factory in Estonia, once seen as the lifeline of Europe's rare earth industry, carried the hope of the entire EU to break free from rare earth dependence. Its production of key rare earth elements like scandium and yttrium is widely used in core components like motors for new energy vehicles and permanent magnets for wind turbines. However, the harsh reality has made this hope precarious. The factory's raw materials have been 70% dependent on Russian supply for a long time. The outbreak of the Russia-Ukraine conflict in 2022 was like pressing the pause button on Europe's rare earth supply chain. The series of sanctions imposed by the West on Russia completely paralyzed the already fragile cross-border transport channels. Freight trains loaded with rare earth ores no longer entered Estonia, and warehouse inventories were consumed at a visible rate. Faced with the dilemma of a stalled furnace, factory management urgently activated an emergency plan, trying to find alternative sources from third countries like Australia and Canada. However, they found that the global rare earth supply chain was already deeply tied to the refining system dominated by China. This crisis exposed the fatal weaknesses of Europe's rare earth industry. The European Commission's Critical Raw Materials Strategy Report clearly states that 98% to 99% of rare earth products on the European market, from primary oxides to high purity metals, are dependent on Chinese supply. What is even more worrying is that China not only controls more than 70% of the world's rare earth smelting capacity, but also holds an overwhelming advantage in the number of patents for rare earth separation technology. When the furnace in Estonia fell silent, decision makers in Brussels had to set aside their arrogance and reconsider their relationship with the rare earth giant in the East. This supply chain crisis is forcing Europe to rethink its survival strategy on the global rare earth map. Airbus has been deeply affected. The sensors and engine parts on its aircraft cannot do without rare earth, but it has no domestic processing capacity and can only watch as its supply chain is controlled by others. Europe has been talking about building its own rare earth supply chain for several years, but has not built a single decent factory. The sanctions on Russia were intended to hurt Russia, but instead, they crippled Europe's own rare earth supply chain. This move was truly shooting themselves in the foot. Europe has now realized how dangerous a single supply chain is, but it's not so easy to diversify now. The most crucial point is that rare earth processing isn't just about digging it up. It requires technology. The cost of building a refining plant in China is only one-third of that in the U.S., and the technology is mature. The U.S. is in a hurry to be synthesized but it has gone in circles only to find that without China's rare earth processing technology, its rare earth mines are just a pile of dirt. A survey by Govini found that there are more than 12,000 Chinese suppliers in active U.S. military platforms, 
from radar electronic components to rare earth magnets for helicopters. This is not breaking free from dependence. It's a deep-seated entanglement. After China implemented export controls on gallium and germanium, U.S. semiconductor giants panicked and urgently launched alternative plans. But so far, they haven't produced anything. What does this show? The supply chain for key materials cannot be built just by saying so. It requires long-term accumulation. The U.S. always wants to choke others in technology, but it didn't expect to be choked first on rare earth. Military hegemony and technological hegemony, in the end, must be supported by a strong industrial foundation. Just shouting slogans and imposing sanctions won't work. Which country do you think can be the first to break the rare earth processing monopoly? Share your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for reading, and see you next time.